everyone and welcome to another tutorial from Colour with Claire. So this is a page that I recently coloured from the Animal Wonderland special of the Colouring Heaven magazine. Uh, the designs are by Kanoko Igusa, a very very talented lady and uh, this is the one that I coloured so it got loads and loads of comments and things from you guys just asking how I did various elements of the colouring. Now I've just done a video showing you how to colour the base, the tarnished metal of the base of the lamp. Uh, I'm now going to show you how I did the, the Tiffany shade and it's really very very easy. I'm not going to colour the whole thing but I'm going to show you how I did the different sections so that you've got a great, you know, a better idea of what I did. So I have an extra copy here. This is the one that I've just uh, done the tutorial on and I'll just zoom in on the lampshade itself so you can see directly what we're doing. There we go. Now it's up to you to choose what colours you want for your Tiffany lamp. I went with quite, quite traditional colours. Periwinkle is PC 1025, uh, light green is PC 920 and peacock blue is PC 1027. Okay, so what I decided to do was colour each individual section but coming from light to dark in different angles. So what I mean by that is I'm going to colour this particular section here and I'm going to start with quite a heavy lay down of colour so it's almost fully burnished and then I'm going to start to get lighter and lighter as I move down toward the bottom of the section. So you see, so dark and heavy at the top, moving down and getting really light at the bottom. Basically, that's the trick for the entire the entire thing is just the graduation of colour. So just making it quite smooth, smooth as possible, really. You can use maybe some odourless mineral spirits or a colourless blender pencil if you wanted to. But I just like to do it with the pencils themselves and it doesn't take anything away from the, the vibrancy of the pigment. So that would be one section and I might do another uh, periwinkle one up here or over there or you know just mix them up a little bit. Uh, peacock blue let's do another but instead of starting dark right at the top here let's say we're going to do this section I would start dark over here this time so I'm not going you know in the same direction of gradient every single time. Let me just sharpen this a sec. It is important to have sharp pencils for this better. So my gradient is starting over here this time. I'm gradually getting a bit lighter as I move towards this point at the top. That's just by changing your hand pressure. That's all it is. So I'm just filling in any tooth of the paper that I don't want to be showing in the darker areas and smoothing out any areas where you might find it's just gone a little bit dark there's a little patch there I don't know whether you can see it and it's gone a little bit dark so I'm going to smooth it out because we do want it to look as smooth as possible you could use a white pencil to really soften it and give that completely smooth milky effect might be nice actually to do on this lamp but I do like to keep the vibrance of the colour so yeah that's the main idea and then I might do a light green somewhere near here. So try not to have two of the same colour touching. It's not always easy. It depends on the pattern as well. But say I might have the light green on this one. And instead of having the, um, the gradient starting down or up, I might have it starting sideways. So putting the dark heavy pressure area on this side and then graduating 
to lie over here. Can't really tell too much of a gradation on this because it's such a light colour anyway. It's a beautiful colour this. So basically, technique is to switch and change the direction of your gradients and to use a few different shades of essentially the same colour. I know the green is it's not a blue, but they go really nicely together. They're harmonious. So that's what I did for every single little section there. Next up, I worked on the flowers, so the roses rather. And for that one, just get my colours out. For that one, I used a, a dark red, so Crimson Lake PC925. And just, a, just one more red, but I think it's more of an orange than a red. Uh, let's go with a Pale Vermilion. You can also use a mid-tone red if you want. You can just go with those two reds or you can bring in a permanent red, which is kind of the middle of those two. So let's do that. Uh, Crimson Lake PC925, Pale Vermilion PC921 and Permanent Red PC122. So exactly the same thing. Start off on this rose. Let's start this section with a gradient over here on the right. It's starting off really dark and then gradually lightening up. And then you might do the section next to it in the um, permanent red. So let's start the gradient here and go this way. And then with the Pale Vermilion, let's do, what should we do on this one? Let's do this side completely dark. I say dark, it's not a dark colour, but I think you know what I mean. Heavy pressure, the deepest bit of the gradient. And basically just carry on like that so until you filled in all of the sections. So let's have the Crimson Red. Um, Let's have that over here. Let's have some permanent red over here. Pale vermilion up in this one. Uh, crimson red on this one again just changing up the direction of your gradient with every section and let's have another pale vermilion one here okay and that is it <laughs> now the next one was the leaves so for this I believe I used I believe I used <laughs> god that's terrible um I believe I used grass green which is a gorgeous vibrant green and again um, you're just doing your gradients, but for the leaves, I kept the gradients all in one direction, pointing down towards the tip of the leaf. So, starting off dark, lighter at the point, same here. It's nice just to keep the gradients on the same direction for the leaves, so it just gives them a little bit more shape. I don't know, I think that's what it did. Um, and just fill them in like that. Again, you don't have to use Prismacolors, you can use whatever you've got. It honestly doesn't make a difference. You can use your kids' Crayolas if you want. You can still do this gradation technique of changing the pressure and things like that. So that was basically how I did the leaves, every single leaf. Um, what have we got left? I think these little yellow flowers that I did on the original. Now for this one, I just got Spanish Orange, which is PC1003, and started off at the centre of every petal with a little bit of that. And 
and then filled the rest in with canary yellow which is PC916 so I'm not done too much of a different you know difference in colour on that or a gradation of colour but it does still give the effect of it having a little bit of shade in the centre a bit more um, of a dynamic finish rather than just flat colour now I also left the very edges of the petals with a little bit of white again just to show that gradation I think that's all of it on here um, yes it is so then what I did was I decided to put the highlights on each one of the glass pieces and that's what kind of brings the whole thing to life is the highlights and doing it on every single individual section just shows you that this glass shade is made up of lots of different shards of coloured glass that just gives it that effect so you can do one big highlight down there which is in fact what I also did on this so you can see you've got my big highlight there but I also highlighted every single section individually so by the way that centre of that flower is just some canary yellow so highlights I always do on the darkest part of each shard so say this one for example let me just get my pen working so I would do a line there and a line down there same on the green in the darkest bit do a little L shape uh, and for this one this one's a bit tricky because it's over a, a flower I'll probably just follow follow the flower like that and then just do a little bit of a with a line like that so that's what I do on every section same on the grass grass green rather on the leaves we'll do a little bit of a line right in the darkest section and a little bit of a, of a, of a V shape or an L shape if you can get away with it again it just depends how much room you've got to work with on the yellow it's difficult because you can't really see it anyway but I'm just going to do a little line on each side of the petal and on the red Again, the darkest bits. Sections aren't very big, so you don't need to really, you know, worry yourself over where you put in highlights. That's a bit of a rough one. Okay, uh, I think that's all the ones I've done. But you can see how just adding that little bit of white onto each section just really makes them pop and, and shine by themselves. Uh, finally, I filled in all of the midline, the midline. So this would be like the lead of the of the Tiffany shade. I don't know if it's made of lead, but let's say it is. Uh, and I filled that all in with a black prisma actually, but I can't find my black prisma at the moment. So we're having black Posca. And it's probably easier to be honest to do it with the black Posca. And again, filling in the edges and the outlines just really serves to make the whole thing pop. And it gives it that classic Tiffany look. So I'm not going to do all of it, obviously. I am going to mess up, of course, make the lines really thick. It's quite important to keep your lines um, <laughs> the same width all the way up, but can't be helped all the time. But anyway, once you've done the whole thing, here's one I made earlier, it will look like this. So that's exactly the steps that I took, the colours that I used and the process. Uh, just realised that I forgot to show you how to do this little top bit on the previous video, but I'm sure you can gather how to do that just from looking at it um but yeah that's the two main elements of the picture that people were asking me to show you how to do it was this um brass looking metal lamp base and the tiffany lampshade so there you are if you do want to do by the way that big big um highlight all the way up grab yourself some acrylic paint or a big thick posca like this one this is sized 1.8 to 2.5 mil and again just do like i've done here really big highlight it's up to you anyway thank you so much for watching i really hope this tutorial has helped you um any questions just ask in the comment box and please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel thank you so much for watching and i'll see you soon on color with claire